Hey guys, so today we're going to go and do something a little different. Um, I know this channel started off with just simple help things and I intend to continue that on, but for today what we're going to do is we're going to focus more on the tech support side and I'm going to show you how to give yourself access into a system as an administrator, um, more or less create yourself a backdoor. Um, this type of setup is probably most useful for people that have uh, somebody else that they deal with on a daily basis or often where that person forgets their password and then you have to constantly go through the whole process of launching the ISO file off of a thumb drive, setting yourself up with your access to gain access to make the changes and then to go back. Let me show you a more permanent way to do that. Um, now, this does reduce the security on the Windows system, so I wouldn't suggest doing this on every system. Um, it will greatly reduce it for anybody that has uh, remote access into the console. Um, that's not to say like remote desktop, that won't help them get access into it through remote desktop, but it will if they have console access where they could get to the splash screen. Um, that's typically things like splash top or some other like log me in type of uh, configuration where you can actually see the locked screen um, now that said so let's take a look and see how we do this so if we go to the actual Windows screen we're gonna click on the sign in or username and password the thing is is you're gonna need admin access to set this up um, you could do it again through an ISO file but for the time being if you have admin access this is how we're gonna set it up so that way you can continue to have admin access to the system even if the person forgets their password so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a look down here we're gonna see ease of access Ease of access is going to give us the um, additional controls. Now, keep in mind that if you change this and you need the on screen keyboard to do anything, you're kind of uh, stuffed. I mean, there's really nothing you can do at that point because you wouldn't be able to give yourself access to it. Um, I guess you'd be able to launch the uh, maybe the executable a different way or change the name through the command prompt to get you access to that, but you know, you got a cart and a horse situation then and you're kind of um, not able to do that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to sign into the system. Um, once we're in the system, we're going to actually go to the start menu, right click on that thing, go to run. Um, we're going to go to C colon backslash windows backslash system 32 and click on OK. And that's going to give us access into the actual system. All right, so now that we're in the actual local Windows system, we have the system 32 folder. Um, the first thing you want to do is go to view and make sure that you have the file name extension box checked. After that, we're going to look for utilman. So it's U-T-I-L-M-A-N dot E-X-E. Now, out of the box, you're not going to have access to change this file. So we're going to give yourself, you're going to give yourself access to change this file. So you're going to right click, go to properties, click on your security tab. Um, this is going to launch your security thing. Uh, you're going to go into advanced. You're going to go into the administrators. You're going to click on edit. You're going to give yourself full control and click on OK. Then click on OK. It's going to bark that you're reducing security. You already know this. Click on yes. Click on OK. Now we're going to right click on this thing and we're going to rename this thing. And we're going to change that .exe to .old. Um, once we do that, it's going to bark again. Click yes. UAC will bark. Click yes. So now we've changed the extension for utilman to utilman.old from an exe. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for CMD um, and we're going to right click on this file and we're going to do copy. And then we're going to right click again and do paste. We're going to click on continue. Um, this is going to cause Windows to copy the cmd.exe file. And then we're going to rename it. And we're going to rename this again utilman.exe. Um, when UAC prompts, click on yes. So now we've changed that name to utilman.exe. Um, close the, um, your window. And then you're going to go down here, right click, shut down or sign out, and just click sign out. Um, that's going to bring you back to the main splash screen. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this um, ease of access file again. And what this is going to do is this is going to open up command prompt as admin. So now we're in the Windows system as admin before we authenticate it. So in the event that we wanted to get into this where somebody forgot their password, we would type in net user. And that's going to give you the list of all the users on the system. And then if you wanted to change the password, it's just as simple as net user administrator. And then we're going to set the password to 1234. And at that point, what that'll do is once you execute that command, it changes your admin password to 1234. So if somebody forgot their password, 
All you got to do is net user, that particular user, put down one, two, three, four, or whatever you want to make the password and hit enter, and you've changed the password and given yourself admin access into the system. Now, this is designed to give you uh, ease of access, and I, I think that giving yourself command prompt through here is much more useful than the narrator. But that said, it does reduce security, so I would only suggest doing this um, for somebody that you know that you're going to need access into their machine uh, with them knowing. Um, now, obviously, what you do with this is up to you, but keep in mind, you could use whatever you want for that executable, a browser, command prompt, PowerShell, whatever it is to give yourself uh, pre-authentication access into the system. Hopefully this helps you out. Um, I will create another video on how to do this through an ISO file. Like and subscribe, it really helped me out. You guys have a good one.